Yes, comrade. We think that this subject could be the key. Patient Zero. Yes. She was pregnant. Only a couple of weeks. Yes, we were surprised too. No, she won't tell us who the father is. Based on the intel that our friends in the KGB provided us with, we've got two possible candidates. Unfortunately, one of them is already dead. Absolutely, comrade. We've taken every precaution to make sure that Emilieva and her child are safe and sound. We're very curious, too. We could be on the brink of something big here. Yes, I will keep you posted. Dear God, Tanya? She... she was with child? Our child? And she was this patient Zero. They were using her for their experiments from the start. My little bird, my little sweetheart. Soon you will see the blue sky, the meadows. You will hear the sound of the ocean, smell the pine trees, feel the sunlight on your face. You're a very special boy. You have a bright future ahead of you. I want you to go far, far away from here and be happy. Don't be afraid. I will always be close to you. In your heart, in your deepest memories, find me there. It's time. We have to hurry. I love you, my sweetheart. Your mommy loves you very, very much. Now go. Tanya was kept prisoner here. And her child, did someone take it away from her? Yes, this is regrettable. My men are looking into it. Regrettable? It's a fucking disaster. How could you let this happen? If someone finds out... Mind your tone, comrade. I was fighting in Afghanistan when you were still pissing in your underwear. Now the boy suffered from acute autism. Couldn't even speak. My bet is, he's probably lying in a ditch somewhere. However, he couldn't have escaped on his own. Someone helped him. Are you saying it was an inside job? It's too soon for definite conclusions, but yes, I would say so. So, it must be a spy, a CIA asset. You KG people see spies everywhere. That probably explains why your arrest records are so high. Saddam is on the brink of invading Kuwait. I'm sure the CIA has more pressing problems than your research. No, this is not the CIA. This is someone closer to home. Don't worry. I intend to find out who. Look, General, I'm sorry I spoke out of turn before. I really do appreciate your work. You are vital to our efforts. The Duga project and our research, it could be bigger than nuclear weapons, bigger than even the space wars.
A lot is at stake here, even the future of the Motherland. I already spoke with some of the party members, and... Let me be frank with you, comrade. The Soviet Union is falling apart at the seams, and I don't think anything can prevent that from happening. I'm not a scientist, but I've seen enough to know that this, Chernobylite, on the other hand, could be the key to our future. We all have to do whatever's necessary to prepare for it. Tanya had a boy, and he escaped. Was it mine? God, if it was, I can't. Ah, oh, compose yourself, Igor. Looks like the KGB was trying to expedite the Chernobylite experiments. Maybe they were even hoping that the findings would prolong the life of the Soviet Union. Clearly, they didn't succeed. Talk to you. Some serious shit is about to go down. What is it this time? One of the big fish is flying into Kapachi. We have a chance to intercept him. We have to act on this intel now. Who is this big fish anyway? No idea, but it's got to be one of NAR's top people. A real 100,000 ruble suit type. <laughs> That's not much to go on. Could just be a waste of time. It is 100% worth a shot. Imagine what kind of intel we can squeeze out of this guy. Just go over there and check it out for yourself, okay? I know a good vantage point. All right. But let's make one thing clear first. I'll do the talking. I've got a feeling this big fish might not survive your squeezing. Sure, sure. Whatever you say, boss. I'll mark the location on your map. Nothing is ever as it seems with Mikhail, is it? <laughs> what is he dragging you into this time? The NAR fish tank is a very murky and dirty place. 
Can you really tell the difference between a big fish and a bottom feeder when you meet them? What the hell? That was a valuable prisoner. He was my ticket to capturing Berlin.
I'm in position. How is this a good vantage point? No tower, no hill? Uh, right. Uh, you all need a tower. There should be a control unit nearby. Find it and power it up. Mikhail, what are you not telling me? And where is this big fish? He'll be flying over in a helicopter pretty soon. All you need to do is fire up the missile defense system. The rest is automated. Pretty fucking awesome, right? It's old Soviet technology. I found it totally by chance. Don't tell me that's not a great fucking plan. What? You want me to shoot down a helicopter? Are you out of your goddamn mind? Au contraire, mon frère. It's the perfectly rational thing to do. Cut off as many of the Hydra's heads as you can! This is insane, Igor. You've no idea who's on board. I know we want to take down NAR, but blowing unidentified targets out of the sky is a war crime! is fucking crazy! I am not going to shoot without knowing for certain who's on board that helicopter. It could be women and children for all we know. You've got to get your head straight, pal. Everyone here, everyone in that chopper, they're all NAR volunteers. Every one of them deserves to die for what they did to me and my friends! I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm not going to do it. It's over, Mikhail. You couldn't pull the trigger, eh? Huh? I knew it. Don't send a fucking pussy to do it. Ah, oh, fuck! Accept it and move on. That's not how we do things around here. You think you can tell me how we do things? My best buddies were slaughtered by these assholes. They tortured us. They clamped electrodes on my fucking nipples. Can you imagine what that's like, huh? Calm down, Mikhail. I want to get them as much as you, but not like this. I'm not going to fucking calm down! You robbed me of my revenge! You think you're something special, fucking egghead. Really, you're just a common thief. You are a major fucking disappointment, Igor. What the hell was that? I don't have time for cowards and pussies, which is what you are. Piss off! I know we have our differences, but you really ought to stay. I need you here. Damn right you do. Don't you ever forget that.
What's new, Igor? Nothing much. What about you? Still thinking about Anton? Yeah. We had some great adventures together as mercenaries. I remember Anton talking about Kashem. What was that all about? Kashem was a nasty piece of business. How much do you know about the civil war in Syria? Not much. I've had other things on my mind. And you and the rest of the world. Nobody cares about those people. For the big players, Russia, the US, China, most of these war-torn countries are nothing but a playground for testing their weapons and making policy. It's called war by proxy. Us mercs usually play a supporting role to the armies on the ground, supplying intel, equipment, and tech. There's an unspoken rule that we never attack each other directly, but sometimes we get in each other's way, and then things can get out of hand. That's what happened in Kashem. Assad's forces, backed by Russian mercenaries, clashed with the SDF, which was supported by the U.S. The U.S. used dozens of drones, fighter jets, and helicopters to pretty much annihilate the opposition. Anton and his mercenary buddies weren't equipped to deal with that kind of air superiority. He watched some of his friends die, and came close to getting killed himself. I admire your bravery and dedication, Olivier. And Anton's. Still, I can't help but wonder why we keep killing each other over some godforsaken strip of land. It goes against everything I believe. And I admire your idealism, Igor. But you're in the minority, and sometimes violence is the only way to solve a problem. That's something I think you're going to learn in the near future. life, Mikhail? Ah, it used to be so much better around here. These NAR assholes are really throwing a chainsaw into my trading operations. It's a pity. Closed cities and nuclear reactors used to be a great place to trade. Uncle Misha, God bless his soul, if you ever had one, used to trade in Ozersk in the 50s. He actually witnessed the construction of the first Soviet reactor. Get this, a huge ass pit in the ground. Thousands of prisoners and soldiers working their asses off. Without heavy machinery, these fuckers were like the slaves building the pyramids. What you call cool is pretty twisted, Mikhail. Take a chill pill, granddad. <laughs> Don't you get it? It's all chaos. Always has been. Back to the story. The camp guards were totally unprepared to deal with this level of chaos and had to rely on hardened criminals to run the show. Misha told me about this colorful bandit chief who used to sit on a Turkish carpet at the bottom of the pit, giving orders. He wore these puffy, exotic-looking sequined trousers and red shoes with pointy toes. As long as the guards provided vodka and some decent food, he kept all the workers in line. I find that hard to believe, but hey, who knows? It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. This place was very fucking special, and Chernobyl was too. Until everything went to shit. God damn it. I miss the olden days. Ah! I can't take it anymore. I don't want to. The torture, the suffering. What's happening? Is it a vision? I see a woman. A young woman. She's in so much pain. What? The rats got her. They tied her to a tree. They're eating her alive. No. I can't watch. They're cutting into her. They're gnawing on her flesh, lapping up her blood. What are you babbling about? You're not making any sense. They are so, so hungry, these rats. Oh, you cannot believe what hunger will drive a living being to do. The Gulag and the Zeno Island. Thousands of little city mice sent on a voyage to hell. My father was there. It rings a bell, but wasn't that before the war? Makes no difference, Mousy. Past, present, future. 
All are the same in the eyes of the Rat King. Oh, that's awful. I'm sorry about your father. Three meals are all that separate us from the Rats, Igor. Crazed with hunger. Oh, you and your damned rats. Either old timer, what's cooking? Mm, nothing much. I need to remember to check the dosimeters. Ain't radiation a stone cold bitch? That regularly ass old man. The other one, I mean, was rambling about it not too long ago. Uh, about what? About Pripyat being contaminated even before the Chernobyl disaster. You're a scientist. Is there any truth to it? Tarakan may not be the most reliable source of information in the zone, but in this case, he might be right. Explain. For starters, the choice of Pripyat as a location for a nuclear power plant was a mistake. Was it? It's fairly secluded. Nothing but woods and swamps. Perfect spot to keep things secret. Swamps. Exactly. Swampland is very poor in certain minerals and elements. Same goes for the vegetation in this whole area. Because of this, the local plants absorb pretty much everything very quickly. Even if it's poisonous, like for example, the radioactive isotope of iodine. Also, both the Soviet Union and some NATO countries have been testing nuclear weapons like crazy since the 50s, pushing millions of tons of radioactive fallout into the atmosphere. Right, I watched something about that on YouTube. Castle Bravo, bizarre bomber, serious shit. And it only intensified leading up to 1963. The nuclear players wanted to conduct as many tests as possible before the PTBT came into effect. PTBT? The Partial Test Ban Treaty, an agreement between the USSR and the West that nuclear testing should be conducted underground only. But hundreds of nuclear explosions had already polluted the atmosphere all over the world, including over Chernobyl. If someone had bothered to take a Geiger reading of the marshes around Pripyat before building the power plant, They'd have found out it was already irradiated. Unfucking believable. Hey, Sasko, you're experienced, right? Is there anything you can teach me uh, about. Uh... About what? Living on the streets? Hey, <laughs> I'm not offended. I can show you a thing or two, but you need to practice if you're serious about improving. Fantastic. I'm ready to learn. <laughs> <laughs> 